Always courtesy, Rev. Okay, this is a long time coming. I'm finally in the Corvette. I'm headed to the garage, but I'm finally in it, ready to drive. Uh, the headers have been returned to stock. I have, of course, a rear section. The interior is all dialed in. Um, I really can't think of anything that uh, I'm going to do to this thing left. And the only thing I may do is add a mid-pipe because I'm likely going to do a giveaway on this car unless someone buys it in the next couple of months. Uh, first doing a giveaway on the M5. Once that's gone, I'm going to immediately go into doing uh, doing the, the Corvette. I've already started to sort of build up the infrastructure of the website and how we're going to deliver that. I headed to the garage today to go work on some, uh, some more shelving that we got uh, at yesterday's vlog. Uh, today's Saturday morning and so I figured I'd jump in this car and take it for a spin and uh, talk to you a little bit about it. Since you haven't really seen me drive this thing much, actually only once, I think I drove it when I first got it for a few minutes. So the suspension setup is uh, I think really dialed. I mean I, I hear an occasional little clunk once in a while uh, but it seems really well sorted. The alignment's good. Um, I don't have any rubbing. Uh, I will get a little bit at full lock. You, you can hear a little bit of a touch, uh, but uh, you know, the car is significantly lower than it was uh, in a stock. I mean, like two and a half inches lower. It's a really pretty insane amount uh, of difference between the height that it uh, is now and what it was. So the suspension is LG Motorsports drop spindles, which is a really expensive move. They're what three thousand bucks for the set, and uh, and then I did all of their uh, their sway bars and end links, so front and rear sway bar substantially beefier. Uh, I retained the factory Magna ride, and I was again I was thinking about doing uh, aftermarket coilovers. Uh, but I opted to just stay stay with the stock uh, transverse leaf springs. Uh, yes, these cars have leaf springs for all of my uh, Porsche and Corvette people, or Porsche and uh, BMW people that are watching this. Uh, the uh, the car does have leaf springs, and it's covered in pollen. I already warmed it up, and then I had the DSC controller, which. Again, I didn't do a lot of AB stuff because I did uh, headers that were hitting the steering rack, uh, and so I couldn't really go out and rip the car. But the um, I can just tell just just how it how it takes and how it absorbs a bump is so different. Combine all of this: the lower, the slightly different, wider offsets, the wheels, uh, better tires than what were on it. The car is super flat. I mean, really enjoyably flat. I mean, the stock car is already great, but this is, this is like, ridiculously great. You know, combine that, the, again, the DSC controller is freaking awesome. It just changes the tuning on how, how, you know, it absorbs bumps. Like, this bumpy road just feels so much more under control. I don't know I'd call it more compliant. You know, this car's a lot lower than it was. But it's, you know, it's it, it's it's just it's very remarkably, very clearly better. Then uh, you know the transmission is uh, MGW short shifter, which is like ridiculously short. Um, it's a it's a really crazy um, crazy difference on how short the shifting is. Let's go this way. The removal of the headers makes the car just so much more realistic. Um, you know, it it, it it loses a little bit of the. Um, a little, sorry, we lose a considerable amount of horsepower. Um, it loses a little bit of throttle response. So, I may still address this on the car before I give it away. But you know, you just just like I have to really. You have to really rev the car. There's such a delay in, in throttle response in this car that I really don't like, and uh, I'd, I'd like to like to see if we can fix that. I don't have a full assessment. I have maybe you know since since getting it all set up, maybe 10 miles driving it. <laughs> this is part of my curse of having too many cars. 
but it's uh, it's a completely different car now. That's pretty darn fast. You know, this car feels faster than it. I think it really is. I mean, again, it's it's 600 plus horsepower at the wheels. Um, it's just so much torque. Uh, you know, I, I feel like even just driving now, it feels faster than my other cars, and so it, it, I think it hits, checks all the right boxes for you know, thrill. It's loud. It's low. It's aggressive looking, uh, and so I don't like this car, uh, but I get it. You know, and so, so uh, you know, you Corvette guys, I, I totally understand. You know, you can get this car for seventy, eighty thousand bucks now, and um, you know, paying a hundred and plus for this, I don't know that really makes sense. Even, even you know, to get a ZR1. I mean, if I was a Corvette guy, I'd of course want a ZR1, just like a, you know, Porsche guy wants a GT3, GT3 RS. Um, but paying a ridiculous amount of money for this rattle box doesn't make a lot of sense. But I, you know, I, I feel like, you know, this, this car is certainly, um, certainly fast, certainly aggressive, certainly a lot of horsepower. I can certainly break traction loose, but I, I can, I feel like I can manage it. It's not quite as manageable as like the M5's power is, but you know, because it'll, you know, second gear here, it'll slide around. And the brakes are great. Part of it is, you know, I've had to replace the brakes. Now, I haven't, um, it's not called bedding, what's it called? Um, varnishing or burnishing. Um, I haven't done that, but uh, I don't. I don't foresee the need to do it. Yeah, the gearing is so tall, I find myself riding around in third gear all the time. I gotta fix this too. The the R7 on the blend mount is a little too wobbly. You can see the thing bouncing around, driving me crazy. I find myself, you know, because of the throttle response, normally I would want to rev match myself. But I feel like the car does a much better job. I can't heel toe to save my life, so if I try to do it here, I just can't do it to save my life. So I, I actually really prefer, you know, auto rev match on a on a manual car. It really it makes it the perfect experience for me. You know, call it call me what you want because of that. But I like I like it. the supercharger a lot more now that I don't have headers. And the Corsa exhaust without the headers is no longer raspy, you know, which is which is a good thing. You know, it's just it, I took the, the V8, you know, with the long tube headers, it really needed a different rear section of some sort. That's why I was gonna try the Billy Boat option, but there's so much drawback, you know, the, those guys who messaged me about um, saying, you know, headers are, you know, cool on this car, but it's just, there's such a, such a negative to it that it's just not, I just don't think it's worth it. It's, it's like unbearably, un, almost undrivably loud, super fun, uh, but, you know, if you're going to be driving around a lot, it's just not, you know, and I know this car is loud and you know, obnoxious, but it's just too loud and obnoxious. So, you know, going back, you know, I wanted this Carbon 65 version, but, you know, I could have very easily, I should have gotten a car that had like 2,000 miles on it for roughly the same cost. It would have been a much, uh, much smarter move. Um, now it's great. Now I would prefer to have a Carbon 65, you know, because I spent a freaking zillion dollars putting brakes and interior parts and all kinds of bull crap on this thing to get it up to up to standard. Yeah, see, I mean, I, I feel like um, this is certainly faster than my GT3 RS, but my GT3 is much quicker. You know, like I, I'll be doing a uh, hundred 
I'm, or I'm doing you know 80 in this car, even though this has so much more horsepower, similar weight, and it's a little bit heavier. because I think the road was closed up there. I think there was a crash up there. There's some little clunk in the rear I gotta figure out. I find myself getting ended up in third all the time. But yeah, the MGW short shifter is pretty nice. So, you know, all the little changes and little tweaks of, you know, messing with the suspension and setting up, uh, you know, different wheels and tires and getting the, you know, all these little modifications that it just, it makes the car so much better, it's so much better, you know, and you have to pick the right combination of stuff, you know, you, you know the Facebook group has kind of don't, deemed it OG spec, uh, it's just, you know, they're all bolt-ons, but you still have to pick the right combo. Let's go down here and take this little tight road. So I'm going to do some more driving and some more stuff with it. I, you know, I'd like to take it somewhere other than my flat, straight roads here. Maybe I'll take it to Sebring. Yeah, this road was so rough before, but with a DSC controller, oh my gosh, I would buy it in a heartbeat if I if I were you and owned a Z06. You should buy the darn controller like immediately. We'll let this guy go do. You kind of want to go down this road. Let's just take a little lap around the parking lot here and then we'll come back down there. You know, the biggest problem, it's just these cars are so tall, but yet so low, it's so odd. Like, you know, you have this huge wheel gap but yet we have, you know, the, the side uh, the side of the car is like is like an inch and a half, two inches off the ground. So it's, it's, so, it's just so, such a darn confusing setup that I'm just not a huge fan of. Those of you who ride around stock, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine. You talk about wheel bolts. The wheel bolts don't do jack, especially on a on a Magna ride car. I mean, it literally did. Um, I got the car. It was a there was a four finger gap in the rear, and the bolts were all the way down. So I don't I don't know what the heck you guys are talking about doing wheel bolt bull crap. It's the do squat. You got to do drop spindles to change the geometry of the thing. So you still remain re retain or not change the geometry, change the height while retaining the geometry. So I don't know, man. I just I don't know how you could deal with that. You know, take one look at it, it looks terrible. It still looks borderline terrible, and the darn thing has lowered two and a half inches. So, you know, again, my bolts are all the way down, and I've got, you know, the drop spindles. But I don't, I don't, you know, the front lip sticks out super far. You have the APR Performance one. And uh, I don't really notice any any issue with uh, you just have to you know approach it like you would any lowered car. I'm driving around in sport mode. I actually kind of enjoy hearing a little bit of the supercharger whine. Again, if this was my car and I was going to keep this a really long time. I would go further with it, you know, I'd deal with um, someone like Jeremy from Pastor Prom or something like that, where I got the car, really set up, I'd address the throttle response, get a tune, you know, make maybe 100 more horsepower, I really don't want to have 900 horsepower and have the thing sliding around all over the place, it's kind of fun to be able to actually rip the thing. The one drawback to the MGW is that I find myself, the, the gears are so close together now, I find myself uh, in third all the time starting out. Let's get a little bit of windows down sound.
laptop. Shouldn't have brought my laptop. note is pretty freaking awesome. Phone in here. So a turn like this is just super flat, man. The car is so flat with the stiffer sway bars. The brakes, the brakes are great. Carbon ceramics, like six piston. It's uh, yeah, it's brakes well, accelerates well, makes good noise. What you know? Why? Well, I guess the question people would ask, you know, why are you complaining? <laughs> you know, I'm sitting up. I mean, I'm like like one finger from the roof. Uh, I'm literally looking. I have to look down past the headliner. And, uh, you know, I don't want to gangster lean. I mean, this is what people talk about doing is you gangster lean the car and drive it like this. Who the heck wants to drive like that? I'm not a child. I didn't want to sit up and see. Um, you know, it's, it's, you get, I, I, you, you kind of get used to it. Same thing with a Camaro or any of these American cars with really crappy seating positions. You can hear some squeaks and rattles. You know, squeaks and rattles don't really, aren't a big selling point one way or another for me. I've had, you know, my 911 rattle. I've had, you know, every car, you know, make some, some noises. I've kind of, I used to really get bent out of shape about that. Not so much anymore. I mean, I'm certainly not going to keep this car. Um, I'm, I wish I didn't do this. You know, I wish I didn't go through this experience, even though it's, you know, it's done to the point that I'm going to make it done. If you had this and a GT3 RS parked right next to each other, I don't see any possible scenario where I would grab the keys to this first. It's just not. But for me, you know, for, for other people, I mean, that this... There's some there's some visceral advantages to this. It's just a very very different, com completely different experience. Outside of the driving experience and all of that. Guarantee this goof is gonna go exactly where I need to go. If I can't go around here, I can't see.
I, again, I, I'd like to make another video when I have a little bit more assessment here of, you know, what's doing, like drive the car a bit more, um, you know, enter and exit a little bit better, you know, shoot for the right spot at least. Um, yeah, I don't know, man, it, it, it's, it's a good car. It's just not a good car for me. Um, I'm really interested to see, you know, we're going to do a giveaway on it and talk so much trash on this thing. The lion's share of people will appreciate this car. I'm not your lion's share of person. I'm a bit of an oddball. So, you know, I'm looking for something different than what most people are looking for. Now, those of you watching, I have a concentrated group of people that are more like me than not. Otherwise, you can't get through what I'm saying. So, so you'll dismiss it. But, uh, you know, this, this, this car certainly has a place. You get a lot, of, a lot of car in one thing. You know, it does a lot of things really well. Uh, I just find that, you know, if we sat down and had, a, you know, had dinner together and we had a chat about, you know, things that, you know, every, every good part about this car, <clears throat> you, you know, there's, there's a pro and con to everything. And, you know, they're, they're, I find the pros and cons are pretty equal. Uh, whereas, you know, other cars like my GT3, the pros and cons, uh, from my perspective, are, are you know, the, the pros far, far outweigh the cons. Uh, where, you know, this one, they're, they're much more equal. You know, like this to see a stoplight. I'm going to have to do one of these deals. I'm not even that big. I'm 6'2". Gosh sakes. So you got a freaking gangster lean it, man. This is how you got to drive. I couldn't imagine... This is how you gotta do it. That's all the way back. I <laughs> the heck drives like this. This is ridiculous. I can't do it. I can't do it. So, you know, again, I would pursue... I would pursue some... Um, figure out a seat doing some dumb bullcrap racing seat I'm not doing. I'm a 40 year old man and I'm going to put some piece of carbon fiber that I'm going to sit on and on the floor and uh, be super in pain every time I drive the thing. I'm just not going to do that. Who the heck wants to do that? So I, you know, I, you know, maybe pursue some seat. There's just not a lot of room there. I mean, the tub, the way it's set up, I mean, we could put, we could probably put something or, or maybe adjust it a little bit, but I don't think we're going to get much more. Maybe, maybe an inch. So, you know, my eyes are here, like right at the headliner. I might be able to move them down an inch, but I don't know. I just can't foresee you being able to fix this, this horrible seating position. And that's what really kills it for me. It's all the horsepower and the noise and the sound and the, and the revving and the, all of that is negated by it. So that's the first uh, introduction to the, you know, my version, the modified version of the uh, Z06. We'll get you some more, uh, more driving stuff here in the future as I, uh, as I figure the thing out. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let me give you a little walk around of the car. Catch you on the next one. Always courtesy, Rev. Yeah.